Hello viewers, welcome to Divine Consulting, a place where we connect people, innovation and technology to create a successful result for our clients. My name is Lucky Igwe. Today, we'll be looking at the categorized step of the NIST Risk Management Framework. The Risk Management Framework, NIST 837 Rev 1, has six steps. NIST 837 Rev 2 has seven steps because a new step was added to the risk management framework, which is the PPS step. The purpose of the PPS step is to prepare the organization to manage its security and privacy risks using the risk management framework, which is followed by the categorize, select, implement, assess, authorize, and monitor. The objective of the categorize step is to determine the adverse impact to organizational operation and assets, individuals, and other organizations, with respect to the loss of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. The objective is to categorize the information types and determine the system high watermark. There are various tasks that are identified under the categorized step. The first one is the system description. Under these tasks, the system characteristics are documented. That's the characteristics of the system are documented. The next task is the security categorization. Under this task, the system is categorized and the security categorization result is documented. The next step is the security categorization review and approval. Under this task, the security categorization results and decision are reviewed and approved. The following NIST publication are used as guide for categorizing an information system and they are the NIST 860 Volume 1 Rev 1 which is the guide for mapping types of information and information systems to security categories. The NIST 860 Volume 2 Rev 2 which is the appendix to the guide for mapping types of information and information systems to security categories and the FIPS 199 which is the standard for the security categorization of federal information and information systems. The FIPS 199 is based on the impact to the security objectives. The FISMA defines three security objectives for information and information systems. They are the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These are the CIA tried. When we talk about confidentiality, to confidentiality seeks to prevent the unauthorized disclosure of an information to an individual, to an individual that does not have the right to know. Now, when there's a loss of confidentiality, it means there's an unauthorized disclosure of an information to an unauthorized individual. Integrity also seeks to prevent the unauthorized modification or destruction of an information. When there is a loss of integrity, it means there is an unauthorized modification of an information. Availability ensures timely and reliable access to and the use of information. Loss of availability is the disruption of access to the use of information and information system. Potential impact is the magnitude of harm or damage that an organization will suffer as a result of a security breach. They are the level of impact to each of the security objectives. And you remember that the security objectives are the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now, potential impacts are divided into three different levels. We have the low, the moderate, and the high. Now, when there is a low impact to any of the security objectives, it means that there's going to be a limited adverse effect, a minor adverse effect to the business mission, you know, for that particular information system or to the organization. When there's a moderate impact, it means there's gonna be a serious adverse effect, you know, to the security objective and to the business mission and to the organization. There's gonna be a serious adverse effect, a significant adverse effect. So when you hear moderate, that means there's going to be a serious adverse effect or significant adverse effects to the security objectives and to the business mission of the organization or of the of the system. And now, when we talk about high impact, high impact means there's a severe 
catastrophic, major, you know, adverse effect to the information system, to the business mission, and to the organization. You know, it could lead to a loss of life. The following steps are used as guide to categorize an information system. The first step is to identify the information types. The next step is to select the provisional impact levels. The next step is to review the provisional impact levels. The next step is to adjust or finalize information impact levels. The next step is to assign system security category. And the final step is to determine the security categorization based on the high watermark. We will be identifying the information types, which is the first step. For the purpose of this video, I've been able to identify a system name. Uh, please note, this is not a live system. Uh, it's just a system name that I actually came up with for the purpose of this uh, video. Um, I've identified uh, some information types uh, using this 860 you know, uh, for this particular information system. And this information system stores, processes, and transmits the following information types, which is the budget formulation, capital planning, strategic planning, logistic management, and contingency planning. The next step is for us to select the provisional impact levels. In selecting the provisional impact level, you have to identify the information types. Information types are the budget formulation, capital planning, strategic planning, logistic management, and contingency planning. The next step is to determine the impact level to each of the security objectives. Now, the potential impact levels that are documented on this slide for the purpose of this video are derived from the 660 Volume 2 Rev 1. In the 660 Volume 2 Rev 1, it was determined that the impact level to confidentiality for budget formulation is low, meaning that there's going to be a minor adverse effect to the system, to the business mission, should there be a security breach or should there be an unauthorized disclosure of information of budget formulation to an unauthorized person. It was documented in the 760 Volume 2 Rev 1 for integrity that the potential impact to integrity is low, meaning that there's going to be a minor adverse effect to the system, to the business mission, should there be an unauthorized modification of budget formulation information. For availability, it was documented that the impact level to availability is low, meaning that there's going to be a minor adverse impact level to the system, to the business mission, to the organization, should there be a disruption of access to budget formulation. Same thing is applicable to capital planning, strategic planning, logistic management. For contingency planning, it was documented that the impact level to confidentiality is moderate, meaning that there is gonna be a serious, significant, adverse effect to the system, to the information system, should there be a security breach, should there be an unauthorized disclosure of contingency planning information to an unauthorized person. Same thing is applicable to integrity. Integrity was documented as moderate, meaning there's going to be a serious, a significant adverse effect to the system or business mission should there be a, a modification by an unauthorized person to contingency planning. For availability, it was also documented as moderate, meaning that there's going to be a significant adverse effect should there be a disruption of access to contingency planning information. However, we have to please note that these impact levels are subject to adjustment. You can adjust it, you can change it based on the impact level to your business mission, to your information system. So they can be adjusted to a low to a high. These are just the baseline, Panist 860, Volume 2, Rev 1. Now, the next thing we are going to do here is to determine the impact, the highest impact level to each of the security objectives, which is the high watermark. The high watermark is the highest impact level to the security objectives. We are going to look at the impact, the highest impact level, the high impact level, the highest impact level to confidentiality. Now, for confidentiality, we have budget formulation as low. We have capital planning as low. We have strategic planning as low. 
we have logistic management as low and we have contingency planning as moderate. Now for confidentiality, the highest impact level to confidentiality here is moderate. Same thing is applicable to integrity. The highest impact level to integrity is moderate and the highest impact level to availability is moderate. Let's take for instance that any of the budget formulation, let's say the budget formulation comes up as high for integrity. That would change the overall impact level for, for integrity to high because that's the highest impact to that particular security objectives. But for the purpose of this video, the highest impact level for confidentiality or to confidentiality is moderate. The highest impact level to integrity is moderate. The highest impact level to availability is also moderate. So meaning that the high watermark for the system is moderate because moderate is the highest impact level to the security objectives. So the system is being categorized as a moderate system. That is the provisional high watermark is moderate. The next step is to review the provisional impact levels and adjust or finalize information impact levels. This is done by you meeting with the system owner or the ISSM or the CISO to review and adjust the information impact levels. In reviewing and adjusting the provisional impact levels, the table above shows the provisional impact level that we worked on previously. Note that you also have to document the rationale for determining that the impact to confidentiality for budget formulation is low. You have to document the rationale behind it. Why did you determine that confidentiality is low for budget formulation? Why did you determine that integrity is low for budget formulation? Why did you determine that availability is low for budget formulation? Same thing is applicable to the remaining information types. Now, the table below shows the adjusted impact level. As a result of the meeting with the system owner, with the ISSM, with the CISO, or whomever you have to report to as an ISSO, as a security analyst, as a cyber security analyst, as a result of that meeting, Budget formulation was adjusted to moderate, integrity remains low, availability remains low, capital planning was adjusted to moderate, integrity was adjusted to moderate, availability remains low, strategic planning remains low for confidentiality, integrity it was adjusted to moderate for strategic planning, and availability remains low for strategic planning. For logistic management, confidentiality was adjusted to moderate, integrity remains low, and availability remains low. For contingency planning, confidentiality remains moderate, integrity remains moderate, and availability remains moderate. By so doing, you have to go back and adjust your rationale you know, for determining that the impact of confidentiality for budget formulation is now moderate as against low. You have to adjust your rationale for capital planning for confidentiality and integrity. You have to adjust your rationale for determining that the impact to integrity for strategic planning is moderate. You have to adjust your rationale to determine for, for you determining that the adjustment to confidentiality is moderate. Why did you adjust it to moderate? Why do you feel that the impact level to confidentiality should now remain moderate? Then same thing is applicable to, to contingency planning. If there was any, let's assume that there was an adjustment made on contingency planning. The next step is to assign system security category and determine the security categorization. To assign the system security category and to determine the security categorization, the first step is to determine the highest impacts to each of the security objectives. From the table, we can see that for confidentiality, moderate has the highest impact moderate is the highest impact to confidentiality for integrity moderate is also the highest impact to integrity and for availability moderate is the highest impact to availability now that we have been able to decide or determine that confidentiality the highest impact to confidentiality is moderate the highest impact to integrity is moderate the highest impact to availability is moderate we can make a determination that the high watermark for the BMS system is moderate, meaning that 
the BMS system is categorized as a moderate impact system. From here, you can document your security categorization results, including the information types in the system security plan, which is a PL2 control. Thank you for watching this video. To know more about the NIST Risk Management Framework and other services that we offer, visit our website at www.divineconsult.com and you can also send us an email at info at Thank you.